From an April, right? Okay. All right, well, welcome to the Public Safety Commission meeting for April 2024. Um, so we'll call this meeting to order. We have, now let's see what time. It's 7.02 p.m. Um, so first item on the agenda is establish a quorum. We have Commissioner Nava, Commissioner Cruz, and Commissioner Dickinson. So. Um, Quorum is established. We'll move on. Item two, motion to approve the agenda. Um, I will motion to approve the agenda. I'll second the item. Okay. <laughs> so the agenda is passes and moves forward. So item three, public input. So look if we have anybody from the public today. So we're going to move right on to item four, Public Safety Commission annual meeting discussion. Um, I believe we have Molly here. Is it a resource center? Yes. You can just sit. We're, we're, we're casual. Yeah, I'm Molly. We're so great. Okay. Um, my staff and I wanted to do like a safety fair event and I'm not going to be yeah, we were actually talking about doing the same things, and we have done one in the past, um, and I think it would be great. What does your community look like? Well, we've done one in the past. So what we did is we took over um, the Paragol Park over by the stage kind of area, and we just had... Um, basically canopies set up all the way around and people um, had their own little booth. It was a tabling event pretty much. We had everybody from, um, I mean, gosh, a lot of different groups. We had uh, some of the senior resources and disabled services, um, Red Cross, we even had the ham radio group there. Like just just whatever we decide, I think would be great. And when do you guys it's usually in the fall, right? We we tend tended it in the fall, but I don't think we're really set on a certain time we have to do it. I don't even know where it says that we have to do one, but we just kind of <laughs> like to do it. Great. Yeah. We were going to try and do one this month, but we just couldn't pull it off. Not too busy, and I know summer's coming up. The park is really busy. I'm really busy with our kids, so I go into fall, and then my team can help plan it. We have a lot of connections with those other agencies. Um, we are virtually open to working together to try and do this virtual event. Um, we might even be able to do like CPR presentation in the morning and mm -hmm. event in the afternoon, something like that. I think it's going to be great. And our, our department is now their trainers, so mm -hmm. they can do the licensing for the, the certification, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Molly, is your thought to kind of uh, focus on Blue Lake proper, or would you want to invite? other communities? I think having it open would be great. Um, the resource center, we are in Blue Lake, but we do serve the top side area too. Um, and I think with a public event like that, it's hard to be like only in the Blue Lake area. Agreed. Um, so I would, yeah. I would like it to be a fairly large event with lots of people coming through. Um, yeah. yeah, fire safety, we had those floods this year, which was mm -hmm. really crazy, still mm -hmm. having an open from the town storm and that kind of stuff, plus all the service agencies that we um, for town meetings, so that's kind of my my vision for it, at least. Uh -huh. um, and the resource center might even be able to get like swag to give away, so maybe some uh, solar chargers for phones, that kind of stuff. Okay. I think it's a great idea. I mean, um, I'd be in favor of getting an ad hoc committee together for the commission to work with you closer. Okay. Um, on that, so. Um, and my team can figure out part of it too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jobs and for the nice service that you guys do, but yeah. uh, it fits within my scope of work. We'll work for the center so we can take on a large portion of it too. Okay, great. And I can help with getting the uh, first aid stuff set up too since I'm with the fire department as well. So, 
Well, that's what it works. Um, so we just got to kind of figure out a date, I guess. And, and you want to do it fairly soon. Not, of course, not this month, but. Okay. We were just trying. We had scheduled it way out, like September of last year. We could just take peace out our whole year. Mm -hmm. um, but we're open. I'm open for fall or summer. Um, for a larger event, I would like at least a couple months to plan it. Service providers usually prefer at least notice. For cabling, especially on a weekend day, I'm, I'm open to it. Yeah. And fall is usually like our best weather, too. So we're not, it's always a little iffy, you know, going into early summer if you're going to get something rained out, if we want to do anything outside. Mm -hmm. But fall is always a really nice time. The days are still long enough, but short enough to, you know, be out, but wrap things up, too. This is something that could be done maybe in the city, in a Town Square? Is it a big enough space there or Yeah, or the park or I found you it. could almost have I mean we you could have it. things in different places. We like. did it the same day as a citywide yard sale to try to tie in the people who are already here. And then but we were kind of in the back back there. And I don't think a lot mm -hmm. of people saw us. So that's what kind of why I was suggesting that. But well it might be nice to do like maybe the morning do an event at the fire station. Yeah. And then the afternoon do something. You could even do like culminate in like a um a safety walk for you know, for health or something, like a you know, down the levee loop and everyone does like a little I don't know, like kind of wrap it all up or have something at the grange, something here, something over there. Because we could just kind of meander around or if you don't want to I mean, these spaces are a little bit small. I mean, we can use, definitely use, if we wanted to do here and then outside, we definitely can use all of this space. And so maybe that would be the easiest. And then something at the fire station, because the fire department could really use the help too, like for a recruitment event. Um, and then we have stuff that we can, you know, give out and, and different things too. So. Yeah, that sounds great. And I, the parking lot, I think, is ample space for people mm -hmm. whose blind canopies up and do it. And we do a lot of our resource center events in the parking lot already. So people are used to coming to this area, mm -hmm. especially resource center events. Yeah. And we can um, block off the entrances too. So people can't drive in. We can just make this all walking area. It would be easy. Okay. Um, is there anybody that would like to be on an ad hoc committee? I'll volunteer to help out. This will be in the fall then? Yeah. Like the, the true fall? <laughs> <laughs> October. So yeah. Something in October? I think so. Um, so I'm be doing October gets into some dicey weather. Maybe September is a better shot. And kids are back in school, so they'll you know, we be more contending with vacations for people. September sounds good too. All right. And we have a new commissioner too, so maybe we can ask if they want to be in on something at the next meeting. Okay. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Um then I guess we'll just be in contact and all right. Thanks, Molly. Mandy, yeah. Mandy can share my email as well to, with you and so we can all uh, be able to communicate or whatever, or my phone number or whatever. Right. Okay. Well, this will be nice having extra helpers. <laughs> yeah. It was a lot of work to put that yeah. one over there. It was We had a little bit of help from the casino. They <laughs> lo loaned us some canopies and things, but. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Is there any public comment on this item? Okay. So we'll move on to item five. Humboldt County Sheriff called out a review, discussion, and recommendation. Okay. So I took a crack at this is the late January numbers here, if you haven't seen it. So um, the data is really becoming it's it's really hard to work with um i double checked with the sheriff's office and they cannot output it in any other format it can't be a word document or a excel which would have been ideal so i finally after i think i'm on my fourth 
conversion program and I found one that will convert it now finally to get it into Excel. Otherwise I would have to just retype everything and that's a real pain. Um, so the other problem is that, um, and I was just kind of paging through this most recent one that you gave us just now, it looks a little better, but there are a lot that don't have, um, on the previous ones, didn't have actual addresses on them. Mm -hmm. It would just say like Taylor Way. Like here's one right here that says Taylor Way or Hatchery Road or something. So those are a little difficult to contend with um, and how to how to kind of categorize them. Um, but, you know, we'll do what we can. <laughs> um, so looking at the late January numbers, um, no, again, no real surprises. Um, the Hatchery Road, Taylor Way area had the biggest amount um, of calls. Um, Glendale was number two. Can time. you, Stephanie, when you, um, on Taylor Way and Hatchery mm -hmm. though, can you, are you able to look at which ones are just like a CAD doc or just a check-in? Cause I want to make sure that we're, we're aware that just because it comes up Taylor Way, that doesn't mean there was actually like an incident, yeah. like that might be like a check-in point. Yeah. Um, so, cause it, will come up quite a bit as okay. one of, cause that's one of our main areas where the deputies do check in okay. Taylor way, Hatchery road area as they, when they so drive you want me through. To just carve out all of the CADs. I think it's good to, and maybe Josh can talk, speak to this too, but I think um, that's been my understanding is that the CAD documentation only is usually like one of their um, predefined locations mm -hmm. to be able to go to and do, you mm -hmm. know, kind of a drive through mm -hmm. and it gets, it gets logged that way, mm -hmm. but it's not like, it's not generating like an incident. Or, should, I, should I do that for all of them or just in that area? I, Josh, are you, can you hear us? Yeah. Can you so, differentiate I, the CADs? So yeah, I mean, any, any time there's a call sort of created, like you're saying, it's not necessarily that there's a call for service or like an incident mm -hmm. somewhere, but like you said, Taylor Way, we know that a lot of people like to park cars, motor homes and stuff there, so that's an area. Um, a lot like on Hatchery, they'll get more of uh, those steady patrol checks by, you know, deputies going out looking for that um, kind of, you know, camping and other activity that kind of goes along with that. So typically, they will have a call for service created with that, so it doesn't create a CAD documentation for it. But yes, it's, it's they're not all going to be like due to some type of actual necessarily you know criminal incident that's occurring. Um, they go along with it. Okay, perfect. So, yeah. So how do we know on any given line item that says CAD documentation only if it's really something? you know, to be documented or, or to be sort of categorized because probably, I don't know, 25, 30% of them mm -hmm. on here are that. And that's, that's a big number, right? Is it fair? No, without, I'm not sure what, I'm just, just because I don't know what um, you're, what data you're looking at, I guess, or what, what kind of documentation you're getting that, that has that listed on it. It's the incident search results that comes from um, is it Margaret? Margaret sends it out, yeah. From yeah. Margaret. Yeah, from the sheriff. Um, yeah, I don't know. If, it, if all it says on there is like CAD doc only, and it's, I'm not sure as far as like, I'd have to look at it with Margaret and see. Um, I think it's not giving a call type. It, do um, it does give a call type. So you can get like a CAD doc. Let me find one. So there's here's one that's a BOLO. Here's one that's a DISP. Here's one that's PC. Here's one that's PROB. So like P patrol yeah, so like PC would be a just patrol check. So that could be again, if it was a regularly scheduled uh, patrol check or just a deputy that's a log of patrol check because I'm in this area. Mm -hmm. It would be logged as a, as a PC for patrol check. Uh, PROB is typically a probation check. So maybe they know there's somebody there that's on probation or they end up contacting somebody that's in probation and they're doing a probation check. It could even be a probationer if probation is out there and probation check mm -hmm. on one of their probationers. That would pop up in this is that is uh, like the PROB uh, type call. Um, if you see ones that are called camp, that would usually be some kind of a, of a you know, possible building camping detail. Um, so yeah, all those codes stand for typically. It doesn't mean there could be something else going along with, with how something's coded, some other crime, but typically the, what appears to be the primary issue is, is what those documentation codes stand for and it gives kind of an indication of generally speaking at least what the purpose of, of the area was. So then we can't really rule them all out. 
No, but if they're just the regular patrol checks, those aren't like just to differentiate. I think it's important. So with the type, because I don't like Taylor. Okay, you don't. I'm trying to keep it so it doesn't look like necessarily. It may not be that you have a significant. I guess crime wave. I guess right. Right. Deputies know that they can't belong on Taylor Way, so it could be increased activity there, but it's not necessarily the. I mean, you could go out there and log a patrol check and, and get there and find that there's not you know a single car or motor Exactly. So log in there and patrol check that there's no no contact made with anybody or no obvious suspicious activity going on. Right, because I just don't want it to look like Taylor Way is like this massive crime ridden area. <laughs> People start freaking out saying, oh my gosh, 30% of the crime <laughs> takes place on Taylor Way. It's like, so anything that's CAD documentation with a PC, I can rule out? Well, you can look, if you look at the type, yeah, so with the, the type tells you what it is. Right. So anything, that's what I'm and, saying. And, and that could make it hard because you could have a CAD doc, like somebody could call in something, um, just like, uh, you know, suspicion form, or you can do a, it makes it kind of difficult because... We can't just say for sure that a patrol check means that they just drove through the area, they didn't see anything, and that's why it was just left as a patrol check. It could be mm -hmm. that, I mean, they could have come across something, um, but if it's in that call text, you know, yeah, I mean, it's pretty, you know, without going through call by call and, and kind of getting into depth with what it heard from each one, it's kind of hard to completely separate them out, but... Yeah, generally speaking, you can look at those things and stuff like, you know, PC or, or that type of stuff um, is it's going to be less likely that it was some other call in, um, heck, you know, criminal suspect criminal activity occurring. Right. I mean, they could do a vehicle check. That could be just going down there and touching base with someone in a vehicle to let them know they yeah. need to move on or they maybe they ran a plate or something. But okay. So do we want to rule them out or no then? No, I just okay. wanted to make sure that because you said it's like 30 percent of the calls. And I was like, I just don't want it, like I said, to to be represented that this is like. A real problem area mm -hmm. um, because a lot of what's being done is regular patrol checks to make sure things aren't taking place, not necessarily that they are taking place. So does that make okay. sense? It does, but I, I need some rules around that, like how you, how we want to kind of categorize those. So I'm looking for something, something like <clears throat> if it says CAD documentation and it's PC, we don't count it as a, I'll say a regular call. Um, that's kind of the problem that I'm having with this is that there's a lot of, it's, it's very open to interpretation because we don't really know, um, you know, I would expect that if it was a patrol check and then something else was found there, there should be like another call right, right. after the same time, but there isn't. So. Yeah. They wouldn't create necessarily no. another call. So let's just say they do a, uh, let's just say they're, they're doing a patrol check in the area. So it gets logged in as a patrol check. So a deputy goes into the area and they buy his dispatch and they say, hey, lock a patrol check for two away. Mm -hmm. And let's say while they're doing that, they end up contacting, um, contacting somebody that's walking on the side of the road. They, and they end up, you know, stopping that person. They, or, you know, stop and talk to that person. And let's say they find out that they're, a, you know, I don't know, parolee at large or something like that. And they end up arresting them for that. Yeah, it's not going to reflect that because they don't typically are going to create a, a whole new call for service. It's all going to be locked under that that call for service because that's what they were initially there doing. Mm -hmm. Versus if it was somebody that called in like, hey, there's a suspicious person walking around, that would get listed as a, usually as like an SUS um, P for mm -hmm. a suspicious person call. So that's, it does make it kind of hard because those don't get changed with every, I like guess, you know, nuance potential criminal activity associated with with something. Um, you know, if it's if it's determined after the after the fact, I guess it wasn't the primary of why they were there. Could you label some as like preventive? Label it as preventive preventive measure? We could. I mean um, can't can't you just keep the type call type? And yeah. then just pull out that you could just pull out the call types yeah. from that batch. Okay. Like take yeah. your tailor way and then do a, a so like I'll, I'll come up with a list of like assumptions that i'll run well they're all there i mean it tell it gives you the type it does but uh, i call but so like do you so you're saying cad documentation pc we just we don't count that as a call 
No, I'm not saying not to count it as a call. I'm just saying that I think it's important to be able to say what type of call it was. Right. Because that way we can we can break out any anomalies or any patterns. Mm -hmm. If we just put Taylor Way had 35 calls or 35 some type of um, dispositions, mm -hmm. we don't and we don't know what those are. That starts to skew the data to make it look like Taylor Way starts to become a hot spot. But we're not seeing what those actual calls are. So if it's got 30 calls, but 80% of them are patrol checks or, you know, that's that's what I'm asking about. I can do this however we want to do mm -hmm. it. It doesn't. I think the call matter. type's really critical. Okay. That was one of the things that because that made a lot more sense for me when I started looking at this, looking to see what kind of what kind of calls are we getting because that helps us start to think about what kind of improvements do we need to make or you know is it a traffic problem? Is it you know a lighting problem? People are sneaking around or is it a burglary problem or abandoned vehicle problem? So but, essentially, there would be. Um, for Taylor Way, since we're using that as our example, mm -hmm. there would be uh, multiple types mm -hmm. for each area, right? That's what. You well, mean. I think every every call has its type, so That's what you I'm can saying. extract. Like, I'm trying to group it into mm -hmm. areas, right? And then each area will have multiple types underneath it. Some will be PC, some will be mm -hmm. TRF, some will be um, threat. I don't know, whatever you know. Is that is that what we're looking for? And that's what would be helpful to me. Okay. Okay. Um, just to, because like I said, I want to be able to differentiate between what's, what's important and what's just a routine yes. drive through versus where we're starting to see some actual issues. Okay. Pop up. okay. Understood. Understood. Um, do we have, I can ask Margaret, I think, um, for, uh, it's kind of like a dictionary of all the call types. Um, yeah. That would be I, helpful, I think. Okay. Can I be able to, um, yeah, it should be able to pull from RIMS and give you like a kind of like a, a coding lizard that says what's what. Okay. And if not, then if she I think it's in RIMS. Yeah. I mean, most of them I can tell you they are. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to Okay, that'll be great. So then what I'll do instead, I'll kind of pivot here and I'm going to just leave all the data on here for for all of our. Instead of trying to categorize it and like yeah. make it easier, I'll just make it bigger and more detailed. For me, that would be more helpful. That's to right. have That's the exactly more data, exactly the better. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. No I mean, problem. I don't know how you guys feel. I mean, if you guys want it a little bit more condensed, that's great too. But for me, um, it helps me to kind of look at issues from kind of a different perspective too. Yeah, it's fine. I was going the wrong way. I was trying to simplify it and make it more graphic in nature. But like, well, and I think the graphics are good. Yeah, but I can. But, but like, I couldn't. I don't want to give you something that has like twenty-five little right. pieces of the pie. Right. That's not. Right. That's not useful. Gotcha. <laughs> but um, but I can categorize this. Um, uh, and just leave all the data on there, and then you can group. We can group. Um, maybe we can do like. A, uh, like a map of the city and so it have like zones mm -hmm. you know well and we can get it from citizen rims too mm -hmm. have you been into citizen rims mm -hmm. and really looked because you can really kind of get into sometimes i have a hard time and i don't know if this is something you guys have um, had a lot of experience with josh is using citizen rims it seems like sometimes data is there and then sometimes data is not there like i sometimes have can't match um incidents yeah. that I get on this report to citizen rims. And I'm not sure if that's mm -hmm. a function of how the information gets into the system. Like maybe the CAD docs don't get in or there's certain things that I don't, I don't or it takes a while. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll see like a bunch of like, you know, our call log and then I'll look in citizen rims and like, maybe there won't be any, there'll be like one or two. So I'm not sure if I'm, and uh, I'm not, I mean, I've popped you know, on citizen rims, you know, a handful of times to kind of look at things, but yeah, I'm not sure. I, I think I'm concerned kind of the same thing you're talking about, like knowing this thing went on in a certain area. And then I think when I was around before, I think there was a time frame in back in the way, so I just wasn't sure. I'm like, okay, well, uh, I, you know, I don't remember all the, you know, that I've never gotten all the, um, the ins and outs of the citizen rims. So yeah. Is, is, that's something that works. I'm like, okay, well, maybe there's a time frame on here that after a certain time period it falls off. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But 
yeah, I, I don't know if there's certain, certain, uh, I mean, I understand certain information obviously may not go in there, but as far as the general call type and stuff, I would think they would all go in there. Um, I guess maybe if you, as you come across that, um, if you let me know, um, like if you have specifics and I can look at it and figure out what's made that maybe knows a little bit more about it and, and, and figure out okay, is it is it is it because of reason, you know, A, B, or C, or is there maybe some some glitch of the system that someone's not, not right. Um, okay. Right. Okay. Is there, do you guys have someone who's kind of your uh, RIMS guru there? Because I'm wondering, maybe that could even be something for the Public Safety Commission meeting to have a presentation on Citizen RIMS and oh, show okay. people, the public, how to use it? Or? I don't know if we have anybody that would call these Citizen RIMS. We have a couple of people that are more of our, our RIMS gurus um, and specific to the function of RIMS that, that we really use. Um, I don't know how first they are in the the public facing side of the system. Okay, but it's I mean we can have, I mean, we, we definitely have um, contacts with uh, Rims Rims. So if there's something we need to get answered, we you know it's very easy to to do and follow up with them on. Okay, okay, okay. And then the last thing is you know on all of these there are just these sort of generic. Um, there's no address associated with it. Like I'm looking at this one right here that just says State Highway 299. Mm -hmm. It doesn't tell me anything. So those are going to have to be just called out in their own category as unknowns, you know, or or not specific, not, I'll say unspecific. And that one actually could just be outside of Blue Lake. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So those are my, those are my questions and updates. And then I guess, did you guys want to see these like as I'm working through them or do you want to wait and just review them at the meetings? I'd rather wait. Wait, okay, We're We're together. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, then, since we got Josh on, let's just move on to um, item seven, agency check-in. And first up is the Sumner County Sheriff. Right. Uh, well, I'm on the ton here. I was just looking at the uh, stats for the last couple of months, um, which uh, looks like just in general calls for service for March were down from February uh, by about 25 or so calls. Um, so correspondingly enforcement down by a few from 12 to 8 and but arrests did go up um, from 2 to 9 in March uh, from 2 in February and then the felony misdemeanor investigation stayed pretty much on par there um, I don't see looking at the calls with those in here um, patrol checks and stuff so more so of that self-initiated activity went up a little bit um, it appears so I uh, I'm guessing that's good for the call volume uh, for the month being down, meaning if we did more more self-initiated stuff, if there still is a less call volume than the, the previous month, that means a lot of the other calls obviously should have gone down uh, that are not self-initiated. Um, looks like there was several vandalisms. Um, no, none reported in February 6th and March. Um, that's the only the only stat here that I'm seeing um, as far as, again, not... Uh, Pass that aren't generated by just proactive activity that, that went up um, in that time frame. Um, aside from that, I know there's the uh, ongoing issue, it sounds like, with the dogs uh, in the uh, along hatchery. And uh, so that's all of that. I have uh, asked our special services sergeant uh, for his uh, and his to. I know the property, it sounds like that, that, that's associated with those animals are uh, like partially associated with as well as some of the camps in the area from what I'm gathering. Um, so, but I did ask him for him and his crew to go out there and start uh, checking on those camps and trying to work from that side of, of uh, anything they can do to, um, you know, assist with, with enforcement there. And obviously we'll be working in, in you know, conjunction with uh, you know, control stuff as appropriate as well. On that. Um, Aside from that, I don't have anything else uh, real significant here. So I guess if there's any other questions or things that you guys would like input or info on, or more than happy to do on the scene. Yeah. 
do you know, Josh, if you guys have gone in, um, I know animal control has gone into the hatchery road property, um, and has, uh, taken into custody, some of the dogs. Do you know if the deputies have gone through to do kind of a sweep yet, or is that, um, something that's on the radar? I'm not aware of anything on private property as far as like um, as far as like you know a residential property with, with people that are allowed to be there um, by the property owner. Um, as far as like I said, that's where I just uh, reached out today to our sergeant for special services and asked them to put it on their on their task list of uh, to start getting into uh, any of those. Those public or public access areas where we may have any uh, trespass camping and stuff like that going on that seem to be kind of associated with that that issue. So um, I know they've been in there in the past, but I think it's, it's been a little, a little bit because um, I think kind of really until recently, um, at least as far as coming across my desk, I hadn't uh, heard much of, a, of an ongoing issue in there. So, but then they'll be getting back out there. Uh, I think, for like I said, that idea that public trail access type. Okay. Um, I know that there's some coordinated um, work taking place to deal with some of the issues. Um, I think there's, it's kind of a, a multifaceted problem um, with those properties. And it might be good to, um, I know we're supposed to be having a coordinated meeting here pretty soon to kind of deal with this issue. Um, from like a nuisance abatement, animal issue, um, uh, fish and wildlife um, impacts and different things. So uh, it'd be good to, I think that meeting's supposed to be coming up here fairly quickly because we did have a, a pretty aggressive um, dog attack incident over there and it was pretty gnarly. So yeah, I think that, yeah, I think that next week I think for that meeting. Yeah. Yeah, you know, a lot of these, you know, a lot of this what it kind of takes to just because of, you know, a lot of these issues delve into, to, you know, different, you know, uh, jurisdictional things where it's not necessarily just a law enforcement thing or it's not necessarily just a code enforcement thing or just a video. So, yeah, definitely good to get, you know, players from all the different agencies that could have uh, some kind of skin in the game to, to help deal with it together and, and, you know, work together and evaluate what can be done. Yeah, because I think um, Commissioner Cruz saw someone unloading a whole load of pallets and taking them back in there a couple nights ago, and so there's a lot of activity taking place. But furniture too. But it'll it'll be good to get everyone in a room and and talk about this because it's. Um, I think that situation could have been a whole, as bad as it was. It could have been a whole lot worse. So. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Other than that, things are okay in Blue Lake? Yeah, I, I, it's a uh, like some dog issues. I don't think there's been anything uh, that's come across my desk that I'm aware of that, that seems to be a, a significant ongoing issue. Okay. Um, can Do you know anything about the upcoming ramp closures and um, anything to pick? Some people in the community were asking about that I know our emergency responders were asking um, about access. Have you you guys been notified of anything to do with the um, ingress and egress closures coming in and out of Blue Lake? I have not noticed the other day when I ran out to the call of the carrier. I saw that. That's right. So I made a quick run into Blue Lake on my, on my way out here. Um, I have nothing. I can receive anything other than any notices. Um, I haven't seen anything on it. Um, CHP may have uh, info on it. Um, if it's since they're the ramps are associated with obviously with the highway, and obviously it's probably a, I'm guessing a Caltrans thing or at least a Caltrans, you know, over oversight. Um, so CHP might, but I I haven't even heard anything that has indicated there's going to be um, any issues with them being able to get like emergency access or anything like that. Yeah, I believe they're closing down all the um the the on ramps coming into Blue Lake and going out of Blue Lake starting it was supposed to be today, but I think it starts tomorrow. Um one of the big issues and I don't know if you can maybe just let people know or maybe if there's any deputies in the area. So it pushes everyone onto Glendale Road. So all the big trucks 
um, everyone going to work in the morning, school buses, and it's really created a pretty dangerous situation. Um, I know we've had several reports of near misses, people in the ditches. Um, that road is really, really tore up just from the last closure. Um, the, it's just a bit of mess. So people are swerving to miss potholes and swerving into other lanes. And it's obviously already really, really narrow. So I don't know if there's any possibility of getting that on the deputy's radar to maybe do some additional patrols in that area or just some random, um, you know, park at, in a driveway and just, you know, try and slow people down. But it's, um, it's going to get really congested because right now you can go up the 299 and turn around at Davis and flip around to get back on the highway. But if they're closing that, um, on ramp going up the 299 and the one, so basically east to west will be shut down. It's going to force people, there's going to be a lot more people on Glendale. So, yeah, it's just been kind of confusing. That'd be great. I know the community would really appreciate that. Yeah. Great. That's all I had. Are there any other questions for Josh? All right. Well, thank you, Josh, for coming. Thank yeah, you. thanks for your time. Yeah. Is it is or Tuesday Tuesday's your day off as well? No, I was oh. Tuesday. Okay. All right. I was usually uh I was uh yeah. Um usually have uh getting running around with me and some like nice remote on these things. Nice. No problem. Well thanks for stopping in. Yeah, thank you. All right. Um, so do we have anybody, we don't have anybody from Blue Lake Fire, um, anybody from the Rancheria? Uh, no, report? I reached out to Anita and Kevin Miller and Andrew. Um, I didn't hear back from Andrew or Kevin, but Anita did email me saying that they weren't available tonight to participate. Um, but she did want to, me to send her on this flyer about, um, they're doing a full scale exercise on April 24th. Um, and she wanted the community to know because there will be um, an elevated um, uh, response down there and um, letting the community know that it's just a practice scenario and not an actual event. Um, so there will be a large presence of emergency responders. And, um, Is that um, this one? Yeah, I put the flyer in there. This one. Do we want to post these on Facebook? Or? I don't. I don't know that um, that they wanted it posted as much as she just wanted to let people know it's not a community event, but it's more just to let people know that there will be an um, an elevated presence of emergency responders in the area, okay. and to just not freak out. Okay, I can use that language. Um, don't freak out. Yeah. <laughs> don't freak out. Don't freak out. Or just, just that, you know, that um, there it's an exercise. Yeah. There you go. Okay. I'll post that one. Yep. No. All I have there. Is this something that um, our fire department is invited to or? I don't know. I haven't heard the city anything. hasn't heard anything about it either. All right. So we haven't heard back from Red Cross either. No, and I uh, reached out to them just to, you know, same thing. Did you want to be a part of our uh, our monthly meetings or is there, you know, information that I could take back um, for you? And basically, no, you know, <laughs> don't call us, we'll call you kind of thing. Right. And I, I mean, in the, they're just severely understaffed, mm -hmm. you know, so um, I get it. Yeah. It's okay. We know they're there if we need them, but yep. right. Exactly. <laughs> they don't really have the capacity right now. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, then we'll move to item number eight. Uh, reports from staff. Oh, that's my morning alarm. That's a little Time to wake up. <laughs> reports from staff. Yeah. Um, let's see. 
thinking about what we have coming up. Obviously, the sun is out, so that's exciting. That means people are out and about. Um, kids are out riding bikes. People are out here um, taking advantage of the trails in the park. Um, so um, this time of year, you know, is always just kind of that heightened awareness of um, space and users and um, slowing down traffic, um, being more aware that there will be more people out and about, there will be more kids running around. Um, so making sure that drivers especially are aware of that. Um, we try and baseball season, baseball season um, absolutely. So um, I don't know, Stephanie, if you're interested in even putting out a PSA, um, that could be one that could be, um, I think, really appropriate for this time of year that um, just, you know, kind of slow your roll and look for, look for people walking around and kids running around. So um, we are going to be, we did, we received our construction funding for Greenwood. Um, so that's $1.6 million to make improvements to Greenwood, which includes a lot of safety improvements um, for the truck route. So that's really exciting. So that project is out to bid right now. We just closed the bid for Greenwood for the lateral replacement. We're going to replace all the water laterals uh, prior to doing the Greenwood project because our laterals are starting to fail. Um, and so we don't want to be digging up brand new asphalt and brand new sidewalks. Um, so we'd rather get those done, make that infrastructure improvement, and then have um, Greenwood paved. So um, you guys are aware of that project that's going to be putting in the expanded sidewalks, um, the raised speed tables, flashing radar signs, um, some of the bulb outs, um, some of the um, improvements to um, not necessarily make the roadway smaller, but to make it at least feel smaller. So to slow down traffic, and that will be from uh, the intersection of Greenwood and Blake Boulevard down here to right here at the bend at City Hall. Um, and then we're in the process right now of finalizing the design for the rest of the truck route. So there's a few pop-ups around. Um, if you guys have any feedback on any of those as you're out walking or driving, um, we're looking at, we mainly have those out so that the truck drivers can give us some feedback. So as we're looking at different bulb outs and changing of um, configurations of the roadway, um, making sure that the, the trucking community feels comfortable um, being able to maneuver their loads around those um, proposed improvements. Um, Taylor Way and Hatchery Road intersection is a big one that gets a high degree, high volume of um, pedestrian traffic, bikes, uh, people on horses. And so one of the things that's really problematic right now is a stop bar on Taylor Way is really far back. And so you kind of stop and then you roll forward to actually be able to see traffic to merge out on a hatchery. So we'll be um, part of the project will be to move that stop bar up, make a safer pedestrian island and increase sight distance, um, but also slowing down traffic on hatchery road. Um, that straightaway, people really fly on that straightaway. And there's also a problem because the bridge kind of crowns and so people can get speed going up to the bridge and you don't see people until you're almost on top of them. So it's a real um, concern that we're working on to, to make that safer for all user groups and slow traffic um, in those straightaway areas. Um, so that that work is fully funded for design and engineering, not for construction yet, um, but hopefully in a couple of years, we'll receive construction dollars for that as well. So starting in May, there's going to be a lot of work going on on Greenwood. Um, we have a pretty short time frame to get all the work done because we have to coordinate with um, school going back in session. So we're going to do our best to get as much work done and sequence it in the most efficient way um, to have the least amount of impact. But the overall impact should be a much safer route, um, a nice paved new road, new sidewalks, um, some aesthetic improvements, um, and then just like I said, just slowing people down and making a much more um, safe place for everyone. Um, what other projects do we have going on? Um, we'll be starting work on the bike park. That'll start ramping up um, now that hopefully the rains are are tapering off. Um, we can start working at the bike park again. So we'll be starting some fundraisers for that as well. We do need some additional material and some resources to help um, 
with the labor. And then we'll be doing a lot of outreach for volunteer work days. Um, so that's going to be really fun to get that going. Um, work continues on the town square. That's going to go, I believe our start of construction date is the end of this month. Um, so we're right now working with pg e on the electrical um, designs. Um, so that site will end up having electricity. So we'll be able to run, you know, Christmas tree lights, um, music. Um, we'll have the, the splash pad going in, a bathroom, um, some new landscaping, street lights around it. Um, so that'll be a really nice, nice project. That's happening this summer, all of that stuff? It starts this month, yeah. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of construction <laughs> going on. I'm honestly, like, feeling a little bit sick to my stomach. Um, but it's all good. It's just like everything's coming together all at once. So, um, yeah. And then... What else are we working on? Oh, we have our FEMA water tanks, we're working on that. We've received our first round of funding for the permitting, engineering and permitting um, environmental work, and then we'll be funded. So we've been preliminarily awarded for construction as well. And that's about a $2 million project. So that'll replace our two uh, failing water tanks. So that's a great project. Um, Should be the same area. Yeah, yeah. And then... Um, a lot of great things are happening down in the Powers Creek District. Lots of great um, enthusiasm for development down there. Um, we're working with the Eisners um, and uh, the Canes on the City Corporation Yard. Um, they've put in uh, a deposit and a exclusive negotiating agreement um, for Council's consideration to start. They'd like to purchase the property and develop it. Um, which is really super exciting. They've got some really great ideas. And so the council will be kind of working through that process. Um, the first step would obviously be cleaning it up, um, which is great because it's it needs to be cleaned up. And um, they, since they're, they own Humboldt Sanitation, <laughs> they'll be perfectly, uh, perfectly maneuvered to be able to, to do that. So, so that's great. Um, what are some of their ideas on um they actually are talking about a container village using shipping containers to do different businesses um food um recreation shop bike shop gear shop um maybe some uh living space um they i think starting out you know starting out to get the site cleaned up and then maybe using the site to host some markets and food trucks and stuff while things are being designed and engineered and different things. So we could at least get the site cleaned up and get it, um, you know, get it in play, which would be really great. It's a really great location. Um, and, you know, the designs that we've been looking at will really enhance the, the neighboring properties as well. So um, I'm really excited about that. I think, we actually had a, a PowerPoint for a container village for that site a number of years ago. We were working with a different um, developer that was interested. And there's so many things you can do with these shipping containers now. They're just really cool. And I, we thought, gosh, what a great thing down on an old industrial site to tra as you transition. You know, you still have that industrial feel, but you can, you can wrap them. You can paint them. They put, you know, they stack them, uh, you know, put big glass fronts. There's just, there's a lot that can be done. So uh, I was really excited when they had that idea. They're like, what do you think about shipping container village? I'm like, oh, I have a whole PowerPoint on that. Like there's some really cool stuff you could do. So, um, and then we're in some talks with um, a group who's looking possibly at an idea for a sports complex with um, uh, indoor um, training facility. Um, it's a, group that's um, got a really solid track record and um, they've been pursuing this idea for quite a while and it could be something that works really well in Blue Lake. So um, that's something that we're actively working on right now. On the same site? Um, no. So just looking in the Powers Creek District for options. Okay. Um, the city will be getting back um, control of the power plant site, I think, the end of this month, if not a little sooner. Um, so we're immediately going to have to start looking, you know, at cleanup and, um, you know, just getting that site in in a position to look at, you know, future ideas and concepts. Um, but that's 
I'm pretty excited about that. You know, it's, um, it's been a long time coming and it's kind of one of those things you, we might as well, now's the time to, to take it back and, you know, start working on cleanup. And I think we've got some good options. Um, so, um, yeah, so there's just a, a lot going on down in the Powers Creek district too. Um, and all of that is being looked at through kind of a master planning lens with Storyland Studios is working on that with all the other projects. Um, the Bottawat project is moving forward. Um, so everything is kind of coming together all at once, which is really nice, you know, because it lets you kind of look at everything a little bit more holistically rather than fragmented and having you go like, oh gosh, I really wish if we just moved it over there a little bit, you know, we could have connected these spaces. So, um, we're still and, moving forward with the RV park or is it? That yeah, that's, well, it's, you know, it's just a concept right now. So, um, it's something that, uh, you know, we're actively looking at options and ideas and, um, I'd like to get the power plant. I, I wanted to wait until we had control of the power plant before we started really, you know, looking further into this idea. Uh, Cause it's a little bit awkward when you're in kind of a, a litigation scenario to be like, Hey, <laughs> and then we have this. So, um, so we wanted to kind of just wait till all that was cleaned up and get a little bit further into the bottle project and um, make sure we were not stretching ourselves too thin on projects as well. But, um, but yeah, it's still definitely something that I think is, um, could be great for Blue Lake and has a lot of, a lot of potential, but there's still a lot of work to do. Um, and then we're still, we had a project meeting today on the Powers Creek restoration project. So um, that project's moving forward. We are going to be asking to revise our project scope um, with DWR. Um, we're not going to be able, they have a hard deadline with their funding um, because of the way their staffing lineup comes down with their funding sources. So we weren't going to be able to make the construction schedule on that, but what we're planning to present to them and they've kind of given us the preliminary, um, not okay, but we've ran this concept by them is doing the, the design engineering, permitting environmental, and then the vegetation removal work so that we can, start getting it geared up and then we'll apply for the next round of funding for construction, which actually works better for us because our initial project was, um, didn't take in some of the issues that we're seeing that we've seen the last two years with flooding. And this project, um, funding source specifically is for flood remediation. So it's a good time. We have a lot of new data that we didn't have prior to show where we really need to do some additional work. So retooling our thought process right now and expanding our project scope um, makes a lot of sense. It would it just wouldn't have made as much sense to move along with the initial design, knowing that we had these new issues taking place. So, um, so that's actually lining up to be, make it a much better project. And we're still going to be getting a lot of work done, um, getting a lot of getting a lot of that vegetation out will also be really helpful too. And that just alone is a, a flood mitigation. So um, that project is also moving forward. Um, I can't think of anything else that's really like. I have two questions. Yeah. Any any updates on the funding for the from HCOG for the things we talked about? Oh yeah. So we submitted for um, two mini roundabouts. Um, there it was pretty competitive. So we we've put ours together, saying that we would be willing to reduce our application just to one if necessary. So it sounds like um, there's a good chance we're going to get one of them funded. Um, so that's good, and that's. That's nice because we can use the money from that grant to um, do the design and engineering for a second installation. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll get us pretty far ahead for a second one. And then there's some other funding sources that they recommended too for the second installation. So, um, so yeah, I think we're going to receive some funding for that. So that'll be good. Um, and that'll allow us, we want to focus on uh, G Street and so that'll allow us to be able to work with the property owners in that area and, you know, have something that's designed and engineered and makes sense. We put in uh, uh, 
funding for some additional um, sidewalk work and some curbing work and stuff too. So, um, you know, our pop-ups were, were just that. They were just some, you know, straw waddles basically um, and some chips in the middle. So they weren't, they were to give us an idea, but they weren't designed and engineered to really be the end all. So, um, so this will be good. If we can get one funded, we can kind of work through some kinks and I think then it's um, a more replicable um, model. So, so yeah, so I'm excited about that one. Okay. And then any updates? I know that Mike said he was going to review the thought about a stop sign on I street. Yes, I don't have, I have the stop sign memo for out here. Um, I don't believe I have the one yet for I street from SHN. From SHN. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to look and see what the status is of that. Okay. I think that's about it. Okay. Now's the time things will start getting busy in blue Lake. <laughs> And then one of the things we talked about um, was, and that might have been related to the HCOG funding, was the art crosswalks. Yes. I didn't know if we had any work to do on that. Not yet. We've been trying to get our Arts and Heritage Commission. They have not met for seven months. Um, they, they're like the... They're like a bunch of cats running around and we can't herd them very well. Um, they all have different work schedules and we have not been able to get them. Three of them work on Wednesdays, which is their meeting night. And so we've been trying to call a special meeting because we're like, if you just get one special meeting, you guys can find a day and change your meeting date. We have not been able to get a meeting date that they all, because we only have four members. So we need three and we cannot get three for the life of us. So we really need a fifth member um, to help us be able to get a quorum. And then once we get a quorum, then we can get them on a regular schedule. So um I'm hoping that um, a couple of them are teachers, so I'm hoping that as school's coming to an end, that'll free up some time so that they can meet. Um, but that's a project that we were kicking over to the Arts and Heritage Commission. Um, I know that they, you know, they had taken um, a lot of interest in that originally mm -hmm. and had done actually some pretty good homework and and looking at regulations and authorities as far as like what Caltrans um, would or wouldn't allow. Um, so there's been some good homework done. It's just now getting them together to meet. So. Okay. You didn't need anything from us though. I think you guys are good. Okay. Yeah. We had kind of kicked it to them and then it just, like I said, it's just been stagnant in okay. that. Yeah. Okay. We are going to get them together though. We're, we're poor Anneli. Or else. Anneli's like, I don't know what I do, like a doodle pool or something. Like <laughs> I've been trying everything to like figure out a way where they can just give us a date. Mm. Okay. Um, item nine, the future agenda items. Um, I noticed we didn't have the approval of the minutes on here. Yeah, I did not get the meeting minutes completed. So I'll so have those done. That, the so the last meeting and okay. then this meeting. Okay. So so March and April. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and then future agenda items, we'll check back in on the um, the safety event, I guess. Is there anything else? Nothing? Okay. Well, then we can take a motion to adjourn. Um, I'll move to adjourn. <laughs> I will second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? All right. With no objections, then the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, guys.